topic and very important article now let's proceed uh, to next uh, article a column on the page 10 that focuses on india myanmar relations in this column the writer uh, is focusing on some recent developments in myanmar now it affects india and what has been uh, india's policy towards myanmar i hope you now uh, know myanmar is going through a political crisis since 2021 and uh, the military janta uh, the tamadaw which is the name for myanmar's armed forces uh, they captured the political power in 2021 by nullifying the democratic election and they declared a state of emergency now recently the emergency has been extended for fourth time uh, and this is a very bad news for myanmar's political stability uh, since the emergency was imposed uh, the pro democracy parties and various ethnic insurgent groups they have all aligned together to form a national unity government and these pro democracy outfits are protesting um, they are fighting for democracy against the military junta this has led to a large scale violence especially myanmar's military junta has targeted the pro democracy movement it has arrested several political leaders it has used disproportionate force including air strikes and heavy weaponry to target the protesters and thousands of people have been killed causing large scale destabilization in the myanmar it has been triggered a refugee crisis Uh, which affects the border states of india like manipur mizoram uh, several ethnic uh, tribes from myanmar they uh, share a connection with the ethnic tribe in northeastern india so those uh, communities which are being targeted by myanmar's military they are fleeing the country to save their life and crossing the border into india to seek protection first for example the quin community they are related to the cookies in manipur they are uh, also related to the misos in mizoram and they share the ethnic familial connection which is a historic uh, a cultural and familial connection between these tribes uh, so naturally they get some sympathy and support in the manipur and mizoram and these refugees have been welcomed across the border in order to protect the them and their lives from the connection military is coming committing against them and now this creates a very difficult challenge for india and let us examine what the challenge is now the myanmar military has announced that some of the political prisoners will be released including the nobel laureate uh, aung san suu kyi uh, is the leader of national league for democracy which is a, a major political party in myanmar which and uh, which until recently had formed elected government as well so through uh, aung san suu kyi has been leading this party since 1980 she has been fighting for democracy in the country that is why she has been awarded nobel prize for her efforts in introducing democracy in myanmar and but myanmar has very troubled uh, complicated history and countries like india have been closely involved in some of these developments that is our policy towards myanmar has always been a very challenging because the face of they face a number of threats of number of opportunities as well so india has been tried to strike a balance in order to protect its core national interest we have extended some limited supports to pro democracy movement but we are largely in favor of myanmar's military as india has a bigger security interest to take care of so we want a friendly government in myanmar irrespective of what happens inside the country so sometimes india has turned a blind eye to all the violations the human rights violations so all the democratic violations relation that myanmar military has done and we have ignored all these violations of myanmar and we have continued to build a strong relation ship and a strategic relationship with whoever is in myanmar power in myanmar it is the policy that the writer is examining in this article we he says that even though myanmar's military has released some of the political prisoners it's not a sign that it's going to give up its control on power because the emergency is not is not coming to an end anytime soon it's unlikely to see any elections 
Myanmar's military has promised to hold election as soon as possible but given the situation is highly unlikely the election will happen so the assumption is that Myanmar will continue to remain under the military rule and the release of political prisoners is only a temporary concession being made possibly to please western countries as these have imposed the sanctions on Myanmar so it's unlikely that we will see a return of democracy in myanmar anytime soon and india knows this very well that is why india doesn't push myanmar beyond its comfort level sometimes we adopt a very realistic policy foreign policy we have to ignore some ideals like human rights and democratic principle for the sake of our core national interest particularly our security uh, interest in fact this is a practice we have followed from 1960s let me just give you a brief background here now please look at which is uh, showing indian uh, uh, see the map of india myanmar border and share a very large boundary around 1600 km plus it is a high porous border the border is filled with um, complicated geography and terrain you have a hilly mountain areas dense forest so it's very difficult hard to guard and pa- patrol these boundaries so as a result there is a constant cross border movement between india and myanmar if you look at the border states that's arunachal pradesh nagaland manipur and mizoram these are the four border states they all have very close links on the other side of the border with myanmar for example the nagas Uh, they have subgroups of nagas in myanmar as well uh, so the naga community in india are connected to naga subgroups in myanmar they share interconnection similarly the, uh, the cookies in manipur are connected to the chins uh, in the myanmar the misos of mizoram also share a connection with the chins and uh, few other eth- eth- ethnic tribal groups in myanmar now the biggest concern for india with regard to this border is that security threat because since uh, decades northeast india has been very badly affected by insurgency starting with naga insurgency as soon as india become independent we have been seen multiples other insurgent breaking out in northeast right manipur have gone through long periods of insurgency from 1960s which is a result of ethnic de- divide between the maithis and nagas and the cookies mizoram has seen an insurgency from 1960s led by misosa then assam tripura right even meghalaya they have all de- gone through a long period of insurgency the problem for india is that due to the porous nature of the border the support uh, and the support present on the other side of the border many northeast insurgent groups they have easily got cross border support they have found safe uh, ha- have an a safe sanctuary to hide away from india and the continue their insurgent operations against india so insurgent groups like ns CN Ulfa uh, All Tribura Tiger Force Miso National Front the People's Liberation Army of Manipur many of these insurgent groups and some kukki insurgent groups as well they have all found a support base in Myanmar time again they also Myanmar is very close to the golden triangle uh, golden triangle is this region uh, that covers the Myanmar Cambodia and uh, Thailand Myanmar Laos Thailand um, the Thai junction of Myanmar Laos and Thai Thailand in Southeast Asia is called the Golden Triangle because it's a hub of organized crime it's a hub of drug trafficking arms trafficking and human trafficking uh, so since there was a easy availability of drugs and weapons it's easy for cross border movements to happen these insurgent groups have thrived they have easily sourced drugs and weapons to fuel their insurgent activities they have found a safe shelter in myanmar with the support of some local groups which have considerable which i suppose to considerable threat to india india's biggest fear is that uh, role of china particularly out of 1962 war india has been wagging a covert proxy war against india by sponsoring some of the northeastern insurgents china has used myanmar as a base and via myanmar it has been supporting some of the northeastern insurgent groups by supplying them with weapons and funds so this has always remained a core security challenge for india and hence our priority with regard to myanmar has always been a broader security and counter insurgency and counter terrorism 
this has been india's top most priority in order to protect this integrity and sovereignty there is a direct threat from these insurgent groups they have got a, a support base and you have china giving support to them particularly in 1970s and 80s so india realized that support from myanmar's government is critical to ensure border security and tackle the insurgent terrorist threats or else it would destabilize the northeast of india further thus poses a threat to our integrity and sovereignty itself so from 1960s india has been our accommodative towards myanmar we have sought very close ties with myanmar government irrespective of who is ruling the country in fact in myanmar democracy was destroyed back in 1962 itself Myanmar's military captured power by overthrowing the democratic uh, government back in 1962 and since then until 2010 Myanmar uh, remained under the rule of military junta uh, for uh, nearly 4 for 40 years for decades Myanmar was in military rule and India constantly supported Myanmar's military by supplying funds providing weapons making in- investments etc essentially we are ignoring um, the concerns we were uh, not adopting a idealistic foreign policy we were keeping a aside ethic values and morality because that was a need of the uh, there to protect india's core national interest india adopted a realistic pragmatic foreign policy a policy of real politic in order to protect the core interest and we couldn't have done that without the support of myanmar's military to secure the border to tackle the insurgent groups and tackle the terrorist threats and prevent the organized crime we desperately needed the support of myanmar security force and hence we built a ties with the myanmar government irrespective of what's happening inside the country so india has never criticized the human rights violation we have never condemned the breakdown of democracy in the country and instead we have built a close relation with myanmar's military lead to a uh, lead a pro democracy movement which was crushed brutally by military juntas even then uh, india did not say a word because we don't want to antagonize uh, myanmar's military so in 2010 when myanmar made a partial transition to democracy and introduced uh, you on a custom constitutional reforms welcomed the changes in 2015 myanmar introduced full fledged democracy and india was more than happy to welcome the changes but within a decade everything has been reversed myanmar has have seen a in limited democracy during this period in 2010 partial democracy was introduced and a partial democratic government was there for 5 years and in 2015 full fledged democracy was introduced which continued till until 2020 and aung san suu kyi's party the uh, nld remained in power for 5 years from 2015 to 2020 India was building a closer ties with Myanmar now it had a transitioned into a democracy but now the military is back it has captured power again in 2021 it has destroyed the democracy and violated the human rights on a large scale and again India is following the previous policy that where we don't criticize Myanmar's military we don't interfere with Myanmar's internal internal problems because we have bigger national interest to protect which is our security interest so it is a policy that we the writer is examining right clearly india's policy is driven by concerns coming from china and of course uh, the recent problems in myanmar has been blamed by indian government uh, on refugees problem um, Uh, on the refugee problem is that clear is uh, this itself a very controversial allegation made by the indian government see along with the myanmar border we had a border mechanism called free movement regime the free movement regime which uh, india myanmar has impl- had implemented it applied for 16 km from the border on both these sides in these border villages the people the people they were given visa free access to Uh, the other side to uh, promote the border trade uh, and promote cultural ties that is 16 km on both sides of border the village that are present the people they the here they are able to enjoy the benefits of the three free movement regime which allows them to freely cross over the borders and enter other country for trade for cultural relations etc but uh, last year due to the increasing flow of refugees the government of india has suspended the free movement regime 
now the government is alleging that uh, there has been a large scale illegal uh, migration uh, particularly of the uh, queen community and cookies uh, and uh, government has tried linking the la- latest violence in manipur with the flow of refugees with the flow of cookie chin community from myanmar into manipur it's been alleged that uh, the migrants have been involved in the organized crime they have been involved in drug trafficking they have been involved in insurgent activities these claims are strongly dismissed by the community leader and they said that it's a maitis who have caused the problem of course without taking a stand on this because it's a controversial issue we need to note that the developments happened in myanmar particularly along the border has a direct impact in our neighboring states in our border states at the ground level in manipur and mizoram and the state government and the local people they have ignored what the whole ministry has said the home initiates in ordered not to accept the refugees from myanmar since but since the communities here are connected they share the direct connection with these tribes they have accommodated them and settled these refugees both in the manipur and mizoram this is a complex situation it is a situation which could alter the democracy which can lead to socio ethnic tensions and problems as we have witnessed and could further increase the violence in the northeast as well so india is mindful of this and that is why india has continues maintaining close ties with myanmar because without the support of myanmar's government doesn't matter if it is a military in power or in democratic government we need their support to tackle these challenges which is critical for stability in the northeast plus india india is in competition we are in competition with china china has a ma- made massive investment in the country under the china china myanmar economic corridor which you can see here it's a part of the belt and road initiative of china see the map uh, this project gives china direct access to indian ocean and it does not have um, to depend on malacca strait through which union province of china is a um, ch- uh, ch- province of china is a direct uh, which uh, you can uh, see that uh, belt and road initiative of china and this project gives china direct access to indian ocean it does not have to depend on malacca strait and through the union province china is connecting road and rail network to places like kokoa port and this is a chinese built port and other key commercial locations like yangon this ambitious project has been pushed by china so india is also trying to accelerate its investment and project in myanmar india is stepping up the trilateral highway which you can see here that connects more with the mandalaya yongon mesot in thailand we are also working on kaladan project which has been halted due to the instability in the myanmar we have recently announced a railway project uh, to connect india's border areas with the myanmar to counter the india's belt and road initiative and china's myanmar economic uh, corridor so there is a degree of direct competition with china as well it is these concerns that drives india's realistic policy towards myanmar all right so that is what you got take away from the recent developments in myanmar coming to the next article um on the page number 1 there is a very important development which have been reported in um, uh, you might remember in march 2023 we had discussed in detail the uh, about the appointment process um, of chief election commissioner and uh, election commissioners to election commission of india um, before march 2023 uh, the chief election commissioner and election commissioners they were appointed by the president uh, based on the recommendations of the government of india that is based on the recommendations of the council of ministers headed by pm essentially the government had a discretion in the appointing election commissioners to the election commission and the government had complete control over the appointment to the election commission of india the president would appoint in his name and his or her name uh, but not the recommendation would come from the prime minister who leads the council of ministers and now given that the government had excessive control over the appointment process there were always concern about the autonomy of the election commission uh, concerns had been expressed about uh, election commission functioning in an unbiased manner which is critical for holding three free and fair elections 
the very bedrock of democracy is the conduct of free and fair election which is the responsibility of the election commission since the government the ruling party had complete control over the appointment process there was a always a concern about the autonomy of the election commission there were questions raised regarding in, in de- independence and unbiased functioning of the election commission so to address these concerns supreme court had stepped in, in march 2023 and the constitution went to the supreme court headed by chief justice dai chandrachut had ruled that a new appointment process has to be put in place the chief justice of india Uh, who headed this constitution bench has ruled that government cannot have a monopoly in the appointment process the supreme court mandated a committee uh, to make these appointments going uh, forward until the parliament could come out with a law so according to the supreme court order in march 2023 this appointment committee would consist of Uh, prime minister leader of opposition in the La- in the lok sabha and if the leader of opposition is not there it would be the leader of single par- single largest party and the chief justice of india basically the judi- judiciary had given itself a role in the abundant process of election commissioners now of course this wasn't liked by the big government because the government felt this was an intrusion of the judiciary into the domain of executive and the legislature now imagine if it was the other way around when the government and the legislature passed the end jack right when they set up the national judicial appointments commission to remove the opaque coalition system of co- appointment of the judges the judiciary didn't appreciate that it's saw that there was a as a breach of doctrine of separation of power the supreme court said it's a breach of independence of judiciary and it struck down the jack in the uh, constitution amendment in the unconstitutional because supreme court didn't want any interfere from the government and the legislature in the appointment of the judges so the government obviously saw this as hypocritical the interference of judiciary in the appointment of the election commissioners was seen as an interference of judiciary that marks the breakdown of doctrine of separation of power so now the government has intervened and through the parliament it is trying to bring out a new law to overrule this judgment of the supreme court uh, the supreme court just a few months back had uh, provided this for this committee comprising of prime minister the leader of opposition chief justice of india to decide the appointment of chief election commissioner and the election co- elect- election commissioners now yesterday in a surprise move the law ministry has introduced a bill um, in the raj sabha uh, which is setting up a committee uh, a selection committee and a search committee to decide the appointment of chief election commissioner and election commissioners uh, this pro- proposed changes going to remove the role of uh, judiciary completely the role of judiciary uh, the bill says that there will be a research committee headed by the cabinet secretary comprising of two other members not below the rank of secretary to the government of india who will select the select and shortlist panel of 5 person to be appointed as chief election commissioner and election commissioners from the shortlisted panel the selection committee comprising of prime minister as the chairperson leader of opposition in the lok sabha and uh, cabinet ministers nominated by the prime minister they will decide on the appointment now this is the new proposal from the government and the bill has been tabled very likely it, uh, it will be passed in the parliament because the government has enough numbers in the parliament so essentially what the government has done is it has removed the role of chief justice of india the judiciary had given itself for only the appointment process by making chief justice of chief justice as a part of the constitution committee so this bill chief justice of india will be removed and the prime minister will nominate a union cabinet minister and the leader of opposition or leader of single the largest party in the lok sabha will also be a member of the pm as a chairperson of this selection committee is that clear so this is the big change that has been proposed by government it is going to essentially overturn the ruling of the supreme court and it has already triggered a controversy because it again gives a monopoly back to the government look back at the committee's composition of the committee you have prime minister under the cabinet minister both from the ruling party right only 
one representative from the opposition and the leader of opposition so clearly that the selection process will be decided through the majority and the majority favor us obviously towards the ruling party itself the privacy and the cabinet minister will vote together thereby giving the uh, government complete uh, control again uh, over the appointment process uh, to uh, the election commission of india uh, so this is the big uh, development which has been reported and of course we will track this bill very closely and we will discuss the topic further when we have more articles on this so this completes by detailed discussion of the mains articles